the uranium decay series. Okay, so here is what is on your test references for the uranium disintegration series. I like to call it the decay series. And um, I think I'll go down here and choose, choose to start right here in the, in the process, okay? So we're going to start with polonium 218, okay? So this is polonium, and the mass is 218, and the atomic number for polonium is 84, okay? <clears throat> um, I think polonium is interesting because it's named for Poland. And it's named for Poland really in honor of Pierre and Marie Curie because they were from Poland. Um, they uh, were scientists that figured out a lot about radiation. Okay, they were really famous for radiation. In fact, um, Pierre died of radiation sickness. Basically cancer, I think. I'm not sure for sure. I mean, I didn't know much, much about it then. Is it now? All right. So looking at the decay series then for polonium, um, it's going through this kind of decay. So it's losing a mass of four from here to here, and it's losing an atomic number of two from here to here, 84 to 82. That's an atomic number of 82. That's a. That means it's going through alpha decay. Well, it kind of tells you that down here. It says a diagonal arrow is alpha decay. Polonium. PO. Polonium 218. And so I put it down as a polonium with a 218 up here at the top. That's the atomic number is 84. If it's going through alpha decay, I'm going to write an alpha symbol. Alpha particles have a mass of four, an atomic number of two. Okay, so if I take out that four and take out that two from these two numbers here, I'm going to be left with 214 on the top and 82 on the bottom. element 82 is lead. Okay, so this is PB, lead 214. Now lead 214, or well, let's just say lead in general, lead does have um, some stable isotopes, okay? Because all the elements up to 83 have some stable isotopes. Lead 214 is not one of those stable isotopes. It's one of the unstable isotopes of lead. And you know that from the, actually from this decay series, because it says here, when you read the chart, this is lead 214. It's going to go through what kind of decay? Beta decay, it says so right here. Beta decay down here. Okay? So let's do that for beta decay. 214, 82. And we're going to go through beta decay. Well, beta particle is that kind of a script B with the tail on the end of it. Okay? It has atomic mass of zero, an atomic number of negative one. Huh? Oh, right, hold on. Uh, PB, right. You mean the B, I thought you said, okay. All right, so 214 minus zero is 214. 82 minus a negative one, 83. So what element is 83? B.I. Bismuth. Are you supposed to add? It's a negative 1. i got to have negative 1 plus some number that equals 82. A negative 1 is like subtracting a number, right? Well, better, better to figure it out now than tomorrow, right? After you take, or after you get the test back. I don't know. Okay. All right. So decay, decay is about the emission of alpha particles, 
beta particles, and gamma radiation. Okay? That's what decay is about. Fission is splitting zero zero. That's a comma right there, zero zero. It's a negative one here. Splitting the atomic nucleus. They call it splitting the atom sometimes, but it's really the nucleus of the atom we're splitting. Okay? Then fusion. All right, still a lot of talking going on. Instead of paying attention, I don't think we have enough time to do something on everything. We've only got about 15 minutes left. Yeah, I don't think we can have, a, have enough time to do one problem of each in, during class. But there is a practice test. I don't have an answer key for it right now. If you do the whole thing. Oh, I'm sorry. Um, if you do the whole practice test and get all the answers right, you can get it to What's the point of the practice test if you don't get them right? Well, you got notes. You can come in and get help from me if you need it. Well, not tomorrow. I'll be here tomorrow. But tomorrow. That's right. Well, today's the day for you to ask all the questions you need to ask. All right, is there anything else on this stuff before I stop the video? Are you not going to show the examples of them? Do you want me to show the examples of them? Oh, I can do that. Up to five points. But, you know, if you only do half of the practice test, it don't give you all five points, for example. Okay? What if I do all of them and I'm just like No, you probably get most of the points, maybe four out of five or something like that. Sure. It, it is kind of prorated. Okay. All right. So fission. Fission is a splitting of the atom. So if I have something like uranium-235 and uranium-235 would be 235 on the top and 92 on the bottom. 235 is the mass. 92 is the atomic number. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a neutron and stick it onto this nucleus. Okay. So the neutron is going to join up with the nucleus. Neutrons have a mass of 1, an atomic number of 0. Hmm? And as a result, this unstable, this is unstable anyway. Uranium uh, has an atomic number 92. Remember, no atom above element 83 has any stable isotope. So this is a very unstable isotope of uranium. Um, so putting an extra neutron on there just gets it to decay that much faster, or actually gets it to split. All right, so it actually splits in two. All right, and so we get two large chunks out the other side. And out of that, I also get some extra neutrons.
drawing this out? Yeah. If you need to do an illustration, that'd be a good illustration of it. Uh huh. I'm not sure I understand your question now. Draw an illustration and label it to illustrate the process of fission. Now you wouldn't have to name the elements here or anything like that. Okay, if I split uranium, it can split into different things. But one of the things it typically splits into, probably more often than not, is is krypton, which is 36, and barium, which is 56. Okay. No, you don't have to know what it splits into. Unless I give it to you, you don't have to know it. You just have to know a large atom like this splits into smaller, big chunks. So alpha is decay. Alpha is a really small chunk. You wouldn't call alpha decay fission. That's not fission. Fission means it splits into really big chunks. Okay? Yes. Not every time. You actually have to do the math to figure out how, math to figure out how many neutrons. This is a very typical type of nuclear decay. I mean, uh, nuclear fission. It typically splits into this. Well, if I if I gave you an equation like we did before on that worksheet, you could fill in the blanks. That makes sense. Mhm. Mm I mean, we could do the math here. We got one, zero. Plus this, give me, say, barium 56. Let's see, I'll tell you what, let's do it. I don't know. And then plus krypton plus three neutrons, which is one and zero. And so we have to kind of figure out what, you could choose a bunch of different masses here for those. If we chose krypton to be 85, well, this is. A total of 236 over here. And right now we have 88, right? So 236 minus 88. Would be 140, barium 148. Does that make sense? You know, you could figure out some of the stuff if we needed to. But I wouldn't leave you with two masses to figure out because that's you'd have to figure out one of the two masses or something. Okay. Any other questions you want me to cover? Any of the large elements could be fission. You don't do fission with small elements. Okay. You don't. The fission doesn't happen unless you get really large elements. So it has to be somewhere down here in this down here on the bottom row of this, or this row here. Do all of these make, all of these make atomic bombs? Um, do they all make atomic bombs? They, I suppose they could, but it's, whether you can make an atomic bomb, quiet please. That's number five. That's the fifth time I've asked this class to be quiet while I'm instructing. Even after my example of, you know, raising my voice to get you to be quiet. Yeah, that hurt my well, I'm sorry. Okay. Um, a lot of it comes down to how much is available. Okay. There's a lot of uranium available. There aren't a lot of these other elements. So, uranium is done because it's, there's a lot of it there. Making plutonium is kind of easy to do, relatively speaking. So there's, there's, there's plutonium is a man-made element, but there's, it's, it's not that hard to make. So that's why you see a lot of bombs made with uranium and plutonium. I suppose it's possible to do it with any of these other things, but a lot of it depends on, well, what's, this, what's the decay rate, what's the unstableness, things like that. All those things go into figuring out what you're going to use to make it happen. Okay? Yes? Yes. Let me do fusion, fusion real quick. So fusion is taking two smaller particles and putting them together. It could be a lot of different things we're putting together. We could put together... 
Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Look at the um, seventy and boron. Okay. Because I've recorded too much stuff. So we put these together, we're going to get 7 and 11 makes 18. 3 and 5 makes 8. That would be oxygen, neutrons. 